If you saw my previous video about making hot rods, then you saw that those weren't really a success. They just ended up way too big. The shrink tubing was way too thick. They were way too heavy and just bulky in my hands. And so they just really didn't make sense to use unless I just wanted a big sort of punchy sound that was a little bit different from sticks. So I set out on this next attempt, which a little bit of foreshadowing ended up much more successful than the first attempt. So this time around, I decided I would make a totally different kind of rod, a little bit more in the vein of the Vicfer 606s. So I bought a bunch of eighth inch dowels instead of quarter inch dowels that I used for the last pair of rods. So these are much thinner dowels. I ordered all my supplies online this time instead of just going with whatever I could find at the store. So I was able to get a little bit more particular and as you'll see in a minute, I got much better shrink tubing this time that worked much better. As usual, I measured out all of the dowels. I uh, did a little bit of cutting just with some pliers I've got. Nothing fancy, I didn't even use a saw to cut them. So they ended up with kind of rough edges and they actually all ended up slightly different lengths, which is kind of interesting and may actually affect the sound a little bit. But like last time, my only supplies were the dowels, uh, maybe a little bit of tape, some wood glue and shrink tubing, and then just a way to heat the shrink tubing, which again, ended up being my stove. I definitely got pretty messy putting all the wood glue onto the dowels, but I wanted to make sure that they were all uh, thoroughly glued because I've actually noticed a flaw with my Vicfer 606s. I'm not sure how well glued they are at the end because a lot of times as I'm playing, some of the rods that are in the middle of the bundle actually start to slip out and so I have to push them back in in the middle of the gig. And that's really frustrating. So if I glue these thoroughly, make sure that there's glue making contact with every single one of those dowels down at the end where I'm gonna be gripping them, they're not gonna go anywhere while I'm playing. So definitely made a mess, got glue all over my hands, but made sure these were thoroughly glued. I let them dry for a couple hours and then got going with the shrink tubing. And this shrink tubing, I bought 50 feet of it online for like 35 bucks, I think. Might have been even less than that. For the amount I got, this was a way better deal than last time. This is thinner shrink tubing, so that's why it costs less. I was able to pick any color. I picked gray, because that's a good neutral color to get started with. I might try some other colors soon too. They literally, I, I could pick any color of the rainbow. This stuff shrunk way faster than the previous ultra thick shrink tubing. Plus this didn't have that weird sap looking stuff oozing out as it shrunk. I guess this, this tubing also didn't have any kind of adhesive built into it that, that melted uh, with heat, which I don't think I really need anyways, because if you get a whole length of this shrunk onto your dowels, it's really not gonna go anywhere. And then I just used the Vicfer 606s as a template for spacing out where I was gonna put the, the pieces of shrink tubing. But I decided, like I did with the last pair, to add small pieces of shrink tubing to the ends to bundle these a little bit tighter uh, to give them a more punchy sound. So I added those in and got them shrunk down. So lastly, I thought, well, it would be cool to add some kind of end cap to these. I could either go try to like buy some kind of end cap or I could get plasti dip and like just dip the end into the plasti dip, let that harden. That could be really cool. Or let's just make it with the supplies I've got here. So first I tested out this weird method of stapling the end of the piece of shrink tubing here and then putting that on. That really ended up being a waste. It just didn't really make any difference. Um, staple or no staple, it worked exactly the same way. And then I trimmed off that excess there after I melted it down. And that actually worked pretty well. It, it makes it look slightly more professional. I mean, yeah, it's, it looks very homemade still, but I think it looks a little cooler with that extra piece there on the end. Either way, they're actually very comfortable to hold. Unfortunately, these hot rods didn't pass the first ultimate playing test. That is a three hour gig. And these, uh, these top little pieces that I put on here that I thought would be cool to kind of make things tighter since I like that sound, actually got loose and came off while I was playing. So I'm kind of torn now. I could either use some super glue and then kind of re-shrink it a little bit more and try to get it tightly on here where I know, where I know it's not gonna go anywhere or I could leave it loose like this so that I can adjust it and say, okay, I wanna have it a little bit looser, so let's slide it down, or a little bit tighter, so let's slide it up, or very loose off altogether. But there's not really a way to keep it in place. I gotta figure that out still. But other than that, no major flaws. These were a success. They, they feel great in my hands, they're the right size, they're a good thickness. They, they sound cool. I almost like the sort of the rugged unevenness here around the ends. 
Either way, it's cool. I like these. So, future plans for the hot rods. I've got a bunch more dowels. I've got some 3 16th dowels, and I've also got some more quarter inch dowels. So I'm gonna try to make some more thunder rod type things. What I'd also like to do is make these pairs in pairs. So we'll have pairs of pairs. One pair will have the sleeve up there near the tip to make them a little bit tighter. The other pair will be identical, but it won't have that sleeve up near the tip. So it'll be kind of looser, but it'll be the same sort of feel. So it'll give me even more sound options since I like being able to have a tighter, punchier rod in addition to the more traditional sort of looser, um, more organic sounding as a lot of drummers would say type of rod. So my plan is just to make more of these. So I've got a lot of different sound options. And for those wondering, really the total cost per pair of these, I don't know the exact number because I bought a bunch of supplies. I have to do some math and some division here. But this pair probably costs somewhere between five and seven dollars to make. Um, as I get going with these, I've got this 50 feet of shrink tubing that's gonna last forever. I've got this big thing of wood glue that's gonna last forever. And those are really the main supplies I'm using. The dowels are pretty cheap. I can order a lot of them online for literally two, three, four dollars for enough dowels to make two rods. Factoring in that, plus a little bit of shrink tubing and a little bit of wood glue, probably five bucks. So I'm saving at least 10 bucks a pair making these. And as I'm making more of these, I'm making more improvements and I, I'm probably getting a little bit better at it, hopefully. So no need to buy more rods. I can just keep making these and have all the sound options I want, all the different kinds of rods I want made to the, exactly the way I want them, my custom design and save a lot of money in the process. So I'm excited about this. I'm gonna keep making them. As I do, I'll post some more videos. I'll also post more sound tests as I go. I know there wasn't a sound test in this video because I mean, these sound like 606s as you'd expect, nothing too special about them. But as I make more of these, I'm gonna do a bigger sound comparison, knock them all out at once, do a lineup comparing all the rods that I've made to kind of give you a better idea. That way there's more to compare them with. So stay tuned for that coming up in the next couple of weeks. So as always, thank you for watching this video. If you found this interesting or if it sparked your creativity or inspired you to go make some of your own hot rods, or if it just convinced you to maybe save some money, which you can most definitely do by making your own hot rods, let me know that, leave a comment, give the video a thumbs up, share with a friend. Thank you so much for watching. Stay tuned for another video next weekend. Thanks everybody.